Hello, guitar players. I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Chris Ruben Winters, and today I will be sharing with you everything you need to know about playing this marvelous instrument, el tres cubano, or in English, Cuban tress, for the Broadway show In the Heights. The tress is included as a doubling in the guitar book, and this video is designed to help you to understand the basics of the instrument and to play the part as written. First, we will be discussing some background information about the tress, including its tuning options. Then, I'll be demonstrating how I play every tress figure in the show. I'll show you how I configure my Line 6 Helix to accommodate the tress. And lastly, we'll cover options for acquiring a tress, as well as alternatives for those who cannot or choose not to acquire one. If you would like to skip ahead to any section, timestamps will be in the description. A few disclaimers. The production of In the Heights I played was at a local high school, and while it made a decent splash in the local news, I certainly don't want to leave anyone with the impression that I was the Broadway guitarist for this show. I was not. I am a Massachusetts-based, gigging guitarist and lover of Afro-Cuban music. I am presenting the information in this video for the sole purpose of helping other gigging guitarists and music directors who may be unfamiliar with this instrument, so please take it for whatever it's worth to you. For those interested in learning more about the tres outside of the scope of In the Heights, I highly recommend the book El Tres Cubano by John Griffin, which I will link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Background Information The Cuban tres is a string instrument possibly descended from the guitar, consisting of six strings in three courses. One, two, three. Hence the name tres. This instrument is a fundamental part of the Cuban son ensemble, with son being the stylistic precursor to what we would today call salsa. Despite the obvious visual similarity to the guitar, the function of the tres in the son ensemble is to play percussive ostinato patterns, not to strum chords. <laughs> Percussive nature of the instrument, downstrokes with the pick are generally preferred. As we'll observe, many of the numbers in In the Heights that call for the tress are drawing from this traditional son style. If you would like to hear beautiful examples of tress playing within a son context, a group I highly recommend is Pancho Amat y su Cabildo del Son, particularly the album Llegó el Tresero. Tuning because the tress is a folk instrument, with a pedagogy that is not as well established as that of classical string instruments, there is appreciable variation in tunings used by players. The most traditional tuning is G, C, E, forming a C major triad. Some players will tune the instrument up a whole step to a D major triad. Others tune the middle course down a half step from the GCE tuning to form an E minor triad. Notably, this E minor tuning is the preferred tuning of the aforementioned Pancho Amat. It is also popular with guitarists who are adapting to tress, and it's not hard to see why. This tuning is the same as the top three strings of the guitar, and as such, it allows guitarists to apply fingerings they already know. I personally use the traditional GCE tuning, which allows me to think of the tress on its own terms. The G course of a tress always has an octave doubling. You'll notice that my E course also has an octave doubling, with the C course being the only unison doubling on the instrument. The E octave doubling is common in certain areas of Cuba, and it is also the most readily available configuration of tress strings in the United States. But more on that later. I prefer the E course with the octave doubling as I find that it gives the instrument a richer sound. If you simply must have the E course in a unison doubling, it would of course be possible to purchase an individual string of the appropriate gauge to replace the low E string. 
It's important to note that with the octave doubling, the E chorus actually produces pitches that sound a minor third below the G chorus, despite appearing in a higher position on the instrument. This type of tuning is called re-entrant tuning, simply meaning that the strings are not ordered strictly from lowest to highest pitch. With this information in mind, some of the writing in the In the Heights book cannot be taken too literally when it comes to octaves. We can actually use this fact to our benefit. Take this example. On the tress, the E strings at the third fret sound the same as the G strings open. Rather than switching between these two fingerings, as if we were reading guitar music, we can get away with playing the note the same way both times, since the pitches produced are identical. We'll apply this concept in the tune No Me Diga, as well as Paciencia y Fe. Idiosyncrasies and in intonation are par for the course when dealing with short-scale string instruments, and especially if you're playing an original tres rather than a guitar conversion, it's best to embrace the fact that spot-on intonation might not be attainable. I'd argue that the tuning quirks are actually part of this instrument's sonic signature, so don't sweat it. Now, with all of that information out of the way, let's play through all the tress figures in this show. The standard notation you'll see on screen is my own re-engraving of the parts from the book that I used, which comes from the 13-piece Broadway orchestration. The tablature is my own creation to help guitarists who are unfamiliar with playing this instrument, and it reflects some minor practical tweaks that I have made to the original part, particularly with regard to octaves. Please note that these tabs reflect my own choice of tuning, GCE, and my own fingering preferences. There are plenty of other equally valid ways to execute these figures, and if you have no prior tress experience, the GBE tuning may be easiest for you. Y ahora, a tocar. The tress plays during the entrance of the salon ladies Daniela and Carla. The section is labeled in the score as son-esque, which is accurate. Also note that the style and chord progression of this section foreshadow the tune no me diga, which we will play through in just a bit. from the salon. Back to Work is an instrumental underscore immediately following the show's opening number. The tress part is very simple and consists of one four-bar figure repeated. This piece of music is omitted from the cast recording, so I will be using the version from musical practice tracks on YouTube. Described in the score as salsa, this tune has a definite son tinge to it, thanks to the prominent role of the tress. No me diga is one of the two big tress features in the book, and it is important to nail this part.
This tune is Abuela Claudia's showcase and is the second important tress feature of the show. Even more so than No Me Diga, Paciencia y Fe draws heavily on the son style, with the score explicitly indicating the side of the clave on which certain phrases lie. If you are confused about what I mean by clave, I recommend watching the linked video by World Drum Club. The tress gets one last hurrah in this tune, Carnaval del Barrio. Disappointingly, this is the only appearance of the tress in the entire second act of the show. The part is brief, but it adds a lot of sabor latino to this big ensemble number. Helix Configuration When I played in the Heights, I used three inputs on my Helix at any given time. The guitar input for electric guitar, the aux input for steel string and nylon string acoustic, and return one for tress. It's not very complicated to set up a preset for this instrument. My preset essentially consists of a preamp, a compressor, two EQ blocks to bring out more of the high end of the instrument, reverb, a noise gate, and volume control via the expression pedal. All tress parts I play in this video were recorded through this Helix preset. I'll leave a link to the Helix file in the description, but definitely experiment with it and see what works best for your purposes. Purchasing a tress, instrument, strings, and pickups. The tress you've been hearing throughout this video is one I acquired from a luthier in Havana, Cuba in 2018. I was fortunate enough to participate in a program through my university that allowed me to experience Cuba firsthand and to come home with this instrument. At the time, there were very limited options for purchasing a tress in the United States. 
I cannot vouch personally for any particular brand, but I have noticed an increase in options being offered online. Naturally, if you are using the tress for musical theater work, you are going to want to model with a pickup or you will buy a pickup separately. On my tress, I use a KNA AP2 pickup, which attaches to the body with an adhesive and includes a volume pot. In my experience, it produces a rather dark sound that requires significant shaping with an EQ in order to be usable. Recall the two EQ blocks in my Helix preset. Nevertheless, it's a non-invasive option, and I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested in checking it out. You could also consider converting an acoustic electric guitar, especially a three-quarter size model, into a tress. There are tutorials on YouTube explaining how to do it, or you could have a luthier take care of it for you. As far as strings go, the only widely available Cuban tress strings in the US are these strings from La Bella, which feature an E octave doubling. I'll leave a link in the description. I use these strings and I have never had any particular issue with them. As mentioned before, you could buy an individual string to replace the low E string, or just purchase all six strings individually to create your own set. There are tress string sets from other brands being sold online, such as these Dragal tress strings from Tommen. I can't speak to their quality because I have never tried them, but if the Tommen product description is to be believed, these strings only come in unison doublings, including the G strings, which is not the sound of the tress. I personally would advise sticking with La Bella. Alternatives to purchasing a tress. There are many reasons why a guitar player might not want to purchase a tress for In the Heights. For many of us in the US, the instrument is difficult to come across locally and some musicians, understandably, might not be comfortable purchasing online, sight unseen. Also, for those of us working non-union pit jobs for schools or smaller theater companies, the pay of a short run almost certainly does not justify purchasing the instrument. I bought mine years before playing the show and only due to my personal interest in Afro-Cuban music. So what is the best way to approximate the sound of a tress? Other Caribbean chordophone instruments, such as the cuatro or the laud, would be perfect substitutes. Pero si ya tocas uno de estos instrumentos, dudo mucho que necesites que te diga que se puede tocar una parte de tres con un cuatro o laud. <laughs> Outside of other Caribbean folk instruments, far and away the best option, if you have one, is a 12 string acoustic guitar. The octave and unison doublings in the top three courses of a 12 string guitar beautifully emulate the tress and all the tress figures in In the Heights can be played with intuitive fingerings on such an instrument. If you would like to use more traditional tress fingerings, such as those in my tab, simply tune the B course up a half step to C. If you, like me, do not own a 12 string acoustic, another option might be running your six string acoustic through a decent 12 string simulator, such as the one from the Helix platform. This won't be as good as a true 12 string, but it will be pretty close. One recommendation I have seen online is to play the tress parts on a nylon string Spanish or classical guitar. I strongly disagree. The tress is a steel string instrument and it is best approximated by another steel string instrument. The In the Heights book calls for a steel string acoustic anyway, and even if you don't have a 12 string simulator, there is no reason to choose the nylon string guitar over the steel string guitar for playing tress parts. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please feel free to drop a comment if you have any further questions about the tress or about playing In the Heights. Que tengan un día maravilloso.